Can sway generous be placed before the noun? I came across sway generous in the following paragraph of today's New York Times, April 27, restaurant review section headlined, Chef's Table at Brooklyn Fair. Cesar Ramirez's restaurant in downtown Brooklyn is a kind of sway generous exercise in personal expression in one of the more extraordinary restaurants in New York City. As I was unfamiliar with the expression, sway generic, I consulted two English-Japanese dictionaries, Japanese publications, at hand, both of which gave the meaning of unique of its own kind, by defining the word as an adjective to be placed after the noun as postposition. However, Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary defines it simply as an adjective, which is right. Is it right to place sway generous in the way of sway generous exercise? The example you found is somewhat unusual. In practice, the typical construction is to treat sway generis as a postpositional adjective, as your Japanese dictionary suggests. It is possible to treat it as a standard adjective, e.g., it is a sway generis restaurant, but it looks a bit odd. The New York Times is quite notorious for doing things like this, calling attention to non-standard vocabulary and phrasing in articles. Also, you're reading a review and night reviews in their art, music, theater, food, and fashion sections frequently push the envelope. I've seen it both before and after the noun. Here are two examples of its usage I found from a Google search. Sway Generous works like Mary Chestnut's Civil War Diary, this man, in fact, was Sway Generous, a true original. As a note, I would use Latin phrases like this with caution. As you may have experienced, they tend to cause issues with how clearly the point is conveyed. George Orwell's essay Politics and the English Language has an excellent way of critiquing this kind of pretentious word choice. Foreign words and expressions such as cul-de-sac, ancien regime, deus ex machina, mutatus mutandus, status quo, bleach scortolting, weltanschauung, are used to give an air of culture and elegance. Except for the useful abbreviations i.e., e.g., and etc., there is no real need for any of the hundreds of foreign phrases now current in the English language. Bad writers, and especially scientific, political, and sociological writers, are nearly always haunted by the notion that Latin or Greek words are grander than Saxon ones.